everything inside me. Ariana Grande's No Tears Left to Cry takes place in a dizzying world where nothing makes sense. It is a twisted tribute to the elite sickest practice. Monarch Mind Control. Ariana Grande began her career as Cat Valentine in the Nickelodeon show, Victorious, and she quickly became an idol to millions of children. Once she graduated to her solo singing career, it did not take long before her fans were introduced to intense sexualization and elite symbolism. That is how the industry works, over and over again. No Tears Left to Cry is the first single released by Ariana Grande since the Manchester terror attack, which took place immediately after her concert on May 22, 2017. The Manchester terror attack happened during the ominously titled Dangerous Woman Tour. A week after the attack, Ariana Grande headlined the Manchester One concert, which also featured other children's favorite performers such as Katy Perry and Justin Bieber. This entire event reeked of MK symbolism. Nearly all of the artists who performed at the Manchester One show have been featured on this channel for their occult elite symbolism. One year after the attack, Ariana Grande has released No Tears Left to Cry. As if to confirm everything, the video is replete with obvious MK symbolism. Let's look at it. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The song refers to the aftermath of a sad and traumatic event, one that was so hard that there are no tears left to cry. While there's most likely a reference to the Manchester bombing in there, the video adds a deeper level of interpretation. Indeed, through clear symbolism, Grandy plays the role of an MK slave that is lost and trapped in a dissociative state to escape trauma. The song begins with these words. Right now, I'm in a state of mind. I wanna be in, like, all the time. Ain't got no tears left to cry. The goal of monarch programming is to cause trauma so intense that it forces the slave to dissociate from reality as a defense mechanism. During this state, the handler can shape the inner world of the slave, and even change the rules of this world when need be. There is a reason why the movies Alice in Wonderland The Wizard of Oz and Labyrinth are used as MK programming tools. They're all based on the same structure. Each movie features a young girl that is swept away into a fantasy world where anything can happen, where nothing makes sense, and where anything can morph and change at any moment. This describes the mental state of dissociation, as their handler controls their internal world. The video of No Tears Left to Cry is a symbolic representation of this state, from the point of view of the slave who must navigate in an inner world created by her handler. Right from the beginning, we get the sense that the video takes place in a world that is completely imaginary. It is also very dizzying and disorienting, some YouTube comments advise against watching this video while drunk. In the intro, everything spins around in a world where there is no top or bottom. Throughout the video, the camera rotates to reveal that Ariana is sitting or standing on a wall that turns into a ceiling. In this world, there is no density, and the basic rules of physics do not apply, it is all a construction of the mind. Ariana is not on the floor. Also, if physics applied, her hair should be pointing towards the ground. But it is all make-believe. Then Ariana falls through a wall, and ends up in another place. In a world that is completely created by the handler, walls and barriers can be broken at any time, then, Ariana finds herself trapped and suspended in a surreal room, an apt way of visually depicting the state of dissociation. Even if Ariana wanted to end it all, she would not be able to do it. She is not in control of her body or of the inner world she navigates in. When Ariana lets herself fall into the void, the camera rotates, and she lands on her feet. Can't escape this world. 
the video then takes a bizarre turn and goes into unmistakable full-on monarch symbolism. Ariana sits on the ceiling of a room, representing, again, her dissociative state. Hanging monarch slaves upside down is an actual technique used during programming. Simply hanging a person upside down for one or two hours will begin to play tricks on the mind. The mind will begin to dissociate, and will begin to reverse the primordial brain functions, such as pain is pleasure. The person's mind rearranges. This is often done with beta alters or beta models, to get them to think that the pain of sadistic rape is a pleasure. Then things become blatant. Ariana literally removes her face. The goal of monarch programming is to program alter personas that the handler can trigger at will. This scene represents Ariana switching alter personas. This snapshot shows, in front of Ariana, are masks representing alter personas. That scene also contains several objects referring to monarch programming, such as puzzle pieces, representing the fractioning of the core personality single eyes, one eye sign, and mazes, representing the internal programming map. One of the mazes is drawn on black paper, and is reminiscent of some of the works by the painter Kim Noble, a mind control survivor who has 13 alter personas. Kim Noble produced a series of paintings on black canvas that symbolically outline the occult and traumatic process of monarch programming. The art style is similar to the maze in the video. Odd fact. In the behind-the-scenes video, Ariana describes the process of creating the mask used in the video as the most traumatizing thing she ever did. Interesting choice of words, considering the fact that the video is secretly about trauma-based mind control. This scene with multiple Arianas emphasizes the concept of multiple personas. The video ends with the first appearance of the sky, hinting that things might get better. However, we find out that Ariana is sitting on a wall, hinting that she is still dissociated. On the right, a bee flies away. One of the symbols representing Manchester is the worker bee. No Tears Left to Cry was pushed by a marketing campaign based on everything being upside down. Everything on Ariana's website is upside down. Once again, this refers to the hanging upside down dissociation method described earlier. This mural, promoting Ariana's performance at the Billboard Awards, features reversed and upside down text on a background of clouds. The mural is strikingly similar to this peculiar thing. This is an invitation to a super elite mask ball organized by Marie Helene de Rothschild on December 12, 1972. The text was in reverse, and a mirror was required to read the invitation, pseudo-satanic stuff. When Ariana performed the song on The Tonight Show, the set was pure MK imagery. This snapshot show Ariana performs on a set made to look like an MC Escher drawing, convex and concave. The mind-bending works of Escher are used in actual MK programming. The artwork of the European artist M.C. Escher is exceptionally well suited for programming purposes. For instance, in his 1947 drawing, titled, Another World, the rear plane in the center, serves as a wall in relation to the horizon, a floor in connection with a view through the top opening, and a ceiling in regards to the view up towards the starry sky. Reversals, mirror images, illusion, and many other qualities appear in Escher's artwork, which make all 76 or more of his major works excellent for programming. Escher's work is also an intricate part of the movie Labyrinth, which is all about monarch programming. Although No Tears Left to Cry is widely interpreted as an uplifting anthem, there is much more going on there. And it is not very uplifting. The song, the video, and the marketing campaign surrounding it are fully drenched in the occult elite symbolism, as it portrays the singer as a mind-control slave who has dissociated from reality. The fact that this kind of blatant imagery was used in a video that is supposedly about picking it up after the Manchester bombing is telling. Although it might not be obvious at first, the worlds of terror and entertainment both deal in the murky waters of mind control. Indeed, those who carry out terror attacks are often the products of mind control or delta programming, 
while the entertainment industry is full of MK slaves, or beta programming. For the elite, both worlds have the same purpose. To control the ambient culture, to dictate a specific narrative, and to direct our collective attention towards specific acts, events, and symbols. The same way Ariana attempts to navigate a world where nothing makes sense, the elite uses media to confuse and disorient the masses, having them look up to industry slaves to uplift them after traumatic events. It is time to wake up and step out of this Escher painting. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.